there's some lines in this that some things that you probably would say to someone if you were out walking wherever it is you go for walks during the day now and they said something like well, why, why are all the stores closed and where is everyone you'd say are you the only one that doesn't know about what's going on out in the world and you would try to share with them all of what's been going on and along with sharing that there would not be uh, a, not a little bit of grief probably anger and frustration and fear that you would share with them as you were out walking and Jesus and his friends are walking to Emmaus getting away from Jerusalem where uh, world-shattering things have been happening to them. World-changing things have been happening to them. And if I can even use a fancy word, paradigm-shifting things have been happening around them, just like they've been happening to us right now. And these two aren't even sure about what it all means. They're not even sure that Jesus has been resurrected for real. In fact, slightly earlier in this reading, they write off some of them. And I would imagine these two are in this camp, write off what the women who were first at the tomb saw as nonsense. Indeed, one of them says that the women astounded us. But he didn't say anything about the women making them feel better. So they're on their way, away from Jerusalem, away from trouble, escaping to some kind of safety, escaping to somewhere else. It's not Jerusalem. And lo and behold, they meet a stranger who makes all the difference. I don't know if you've ever had that experience before, meeting a stranger who makes all the difference. The difference. I'm sure you have. If you've been out on the road and you've gotten a flat tire and someone has stopped to help you, you've needed help in a time of trouble, you've been sitting in an airport and, and, and had a profound conversation with someone that changed the entire course of your day, or maybe even the entire course of your life. I've had that experience many times, as I'm sure, I'm sure you have. Especially when I've been in transit from one place to another, leaving one reality and going to this other reality, sometimes not in a happy state even. And I'll run into that person who makes all the difference, turns things around. And this is exactly what happens to Cleopas and his friend, but little do they know who it is. They don't even recognize Jesus. Jesus walks seven miles with them. Seven miles. Good couple of hours. I'd imagine they walked in a nice trot. They walked everywhere. And they don't see who he is. In spite of his manner with them, in spite of his listening to them, in spite of the fact that he seems to understand be able to contextualize what happened to Jesus better than anyone can, putting in terms of, of the prophets and what the prophets that came before us and, and the scriptures that they were all very familiar with uh, said, they still don't see him. And they walk with Jesus. And they wanted them out of gratitude or out of obligation or, or maybe because something in this stranger just strikes them as special and says, hey, stay with us. You don't need to be out at night. Jesus goes in with them. And lo and behold, he prays over the meal, kind of unusual for a guest to do. And then they see him in the breaking of the bread. Now what's even more amazing about this is that once Jesus vanishes, which is something that, that I just can't ever get over in the scripture, poof, you would expect them to go, wait, where'd he go? But they don't even miss his physical presence with them, do they? Because their hearts are now burning 
with what he said. Their hearts are now burning with the reality of the resurrection. So much so that he is with them. He is, he is with them in body. He is with them in spirit. He is with them in their most authentic selves. So much so that at night even, they pack their bags, we think, and they go back to Jerusalem, back to trouble, back to that of which they were afraid. All because they met Jesus on the road. I see, friends, we are in a similar place right now. We've been doing this for a month. We've had Easter on Zoom. We've been having online services. We haven't been able to meet together. And we're in the first lap of what's going to be a really long journey around this experience and around COVID-19. All of us are in that same place, feeling afraid, feeling tired, not knowing what to make of this. And maybe even like the disciples, unable to see Jesus in our midst. But see, the good news of the gospel, the promise of the gospel today, is not only that Jesus is in our midst, but Jesus is walking along beside us. Jesus is listening to us. Jesus is opening up the scriptures to us. And Jesus is made known in the love that we have for one another. And Jesus is made known in the love that we feel for him in our time with him. Jesus is walking with us just as he walked with the disciples to Emmaus during this pandemic, friends. That is the good news. We are not alone, and not only are we not alone, we have a Savior that wants to enter into our doubts and enter into conversation with us around that which weighs down our hearts. Jesus is not the stranger on the road, friends. He is our traveling companion. He always has been. He always will be. And he is especially, especially right now.